Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So in this video, I want to show you how we can solve systems of equations using matrices or matrix equations. So let's start off by considering a really, really simple case. Let's say that we have X is equal to one, Y is equal to two, and Z is equal to three. How can we express this in terms of AX is equal to B? Well, we know that this vector x represents our unknowns, or it represents x, y, and z. And since we're multiplying these unknowns by a matrix A, we know that matrix A has to be the coefficients of our unknowns. And that leaves this vector, B, as the non-coefficient numbers that are included in our three equations. But obviously this is a trivial example. Technically we do have three equations. We have x is equal to one, y is equal to two, and z is equal to three. One, two, three equations. So if I wanted to organize this system into ax is equal to b, well I can do that like this. Times x, y, z and this is going to equal the right-hand side of our equation, one, two, and three. And let's verify that this is in fact true. If I were to take this first row and multiply it by our vector, what I would get is x. And if I were to take this second row and multiply it by our vector, what I would get is y. And then if I were to take this third row, what I would get is z. So the resulting vector from this matrix multiplication with this vector is x, y, z. And this is equal to this vector, one, two, and three. So we can see that we do have three equations. We have x is equal to one, y is equal to two, and z is equal to three, which is exactly what we started up here. So we know that this is, in fact, a valid representation of this system of equations. And the reason why I wanted to illustrate this is because I wanted to show you guys that we can represent systems of linear equations using the form ax is equal to b. So now let's consider a less trivial example. Let's say that we have 2x plus y plus z is equal to one. And then we have 4x plus 2y minus z is equal to two. And then finally we have 6x minus y plus 2z is equal to four. So we have one, two, three equations, and we have three unknowns, which are x, y, and z. And now we want to solve for our unknowns x, y, and z. So if you guys are coming from an algebra background, then you may say, okay, we can do that by um, adding and subtracting multiples of our equations and substitution. Like we can solve this first equation for x in terms of y and z, and then we can plug that in here, and then we can also do the same right here and plug it in here, and you get a mess. It, it takes a long time, and it is tedious work, and chances are you're going to make a mistake. Instead, what we can do is we can solve this system using matrix equations. So I can express this system in terms of ax is equal to b. So the way that I do that, as I demonstrated before, is I put all of the coefficients of our unknowns inside our matrix A, and I multiply it by x, y, and z. And this is going to equal the non-coefficient numbers, which correspond to this right-hand side, one, two, and four. So now we just need to figure out where the numbers go and, and make sure that the correct numbers are in the correct placement. So in this first equation, we have two x plus y plus z is equal to one. Therefore, I need a two right here, a one right here and a one right here, which correspond to two, one, one. And then in the second row, I have a four, a two, and a negative one. So I put a four, two, and negative one right here. And then in the last equation, I have a six, negative one, and a two. So I put a six, negative one, and a two right here. And let's go ahead and verify that this does in fact represent our system. If I were to take this first row and multiply it by a vector, what I get is two times x plus one times y plus one times z, which comes out to be two x plus y plus z. Yep, that's fine. And same thing right here, if I were to look at this row and multiply it by a vector, what I get is four times x 
plus two times y minus one times z, which is exactly what we get in our second equation up here. And we can verify the same thing for our last equation. So basically what we can see is that each row in this matrix system directly corresponds to the coefficients up here in our actual equation. We have two, one, one, and one, and up here we have two, one, one, and one. And same goes for the other two equations. So we can see that it's pretty easy to go from a system of equations to a matrix equation. So now all we have to do in order to solve for x, y, and z is basically we just need to find the inverse of this guy and multiply it by this guy. So our unknown vector x is equal to a inverse times b. So it's just a matter of finding a inverse. And, and if you guys watched my previous couple videos, we know exactly how to find the inverse of a. And we also know two techniques on how to solve this equation. We can either, we can either brute force it and determine a inverse and multiply it by b, or if our matrix doesn't have an inverse, or if we don't want to use that method, what we can do is we can augment our matrix A with our vector B, and then we can row reduce it to the identity matrix, and what we get on the right-hand side of the augmentation bar is our vector X, which we are solving for. So those are the two methods in which we solve the system of equations, but the important thing here, the point of this video is to show you that we can in fact use matrix equations in order to actually solve systems of equations that we would normally use algebra on. And it's much more efficient and it's a lot faster and it'll save you guys a lot of time. So in the next couple of videos, I am going to actually explicitly demonstrate solving for X using this method right here. And then I'm also going to demonstrate it using this method. So stay tuned and I'll see you guys in the next video.